Hello and welcome to a homespun house. Oh, it's been a while since um, we last spoke, but um, I'm happy to be sitting here chatting with you guys. It's very early in the morning. I honestly just woke up and I'm definitely a morning person and a night person. <laughs> um, I like to get up early and I like to go to bed sometime between, I would say 11 and one which I feel like is a night person for a person who has children um, because my girls are up around 6.37 and um, so I'm happy to be here in the morning chatting with you guys about knitting. My name is Molly and I have the Homespun House yarn shop where I dye yarn and I think I mentioned this earlier, I will be having a little project bag um, yarn kit that I will be sewing the project bag for um, when I first started a homespun house, that's all that I did. I just made project bags. So I'm very excited to um, get these project bags sewn up. They're very, very sweet and cute. I already have all of the fabric cut um, and get those up in the shop for you sometime, I would say probably in, in two weeks time. Um, but I have been doing so much wonderful knitting. Um, so much wonderful knitting. And some of the knitting that I have been knitting on has changed. Last time we spoke, I wasn't really in that much of a sock mood. I did not want to be knitting socks and I wanted to be knitting on some sort of just um, very relaxing, no fuss, no texture, stockinette style pullover or cardigan, what have you. Just something that is as simple and mindless as a plain stockinette sock which for me is simple and mindless. Um, so that's changed a little bit. I My sock mojo really, really kicked off, I would say pretty much after my parents left. We had a fantastic time, by the way. Um, so I have been knitting socks. Oh, so much has gone on since we last spoke. I think it's been about two months, so it always feels really strange catching up after that long of a period of time. This is a really wonderful mug that was gifted to me by Amber of Maker's Haven. I mention her name quite a bit, but I adore her, her podcast, her makes, her yarn, her progress keepers, everything she puts together. So while we're on the subject of socks, Enodi had a birthday um, in the beginning of November and um, I had purchased this yarn from Nicole C. Mendez because as soon as I saw it pop up on her Instagram, I knew that these would make perfect socks for Ado D. And she saw this yarn and she said, oh my goodness, I would love socks out of this. And I said, sorry, there isn't enough time to knit socks. Of course there was enough time to knit socks, but I just didn't want her to know that she was getting socks. So um, there is still uh, this yarn available in Nicole's shop. I've had a look. She has some amazing uh, self-striping yarns. Um, she lives in Germany, so if you're German, she's local. If you're in Europe, you don't have to pay those custom fees. And she dyes beautiful self-striping sock yarns. If you like Harry Potter, she has a Shrieking Shack colorway. It is jewel-toned and dark and mysterious, and I love it. That will definitely be my next purchase from her. So. I do have one and these have already gone through the wash and have been worn a lot. So they are looking a little bit, um, not as beautiful if I would have sh as I would have shown them to you had they come straight off the needles. So I did not match these up as you can see, but they matched up pretty well. The stripes are just a little bit off. I got very lucky. Or did I match these up now that I'm looking? I mean, I finished these a little while ago, so. No, I didn't because you can see I finished with the orange and then the green starts up again. So I just got very, very lucky with these. And I will be having a giveaway with Nicole C. Mendes um, in my Instagram feed sometime next week, so be looking out for that. It will not just be this skein of yarn. This is her ice cream colorway. This was a fantastic donation to the podcast. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think 
it could be quite uh, Christmassy looking. There's reds and it kind of reminds me of uh, Zimtsterne, which are German um, cookies that you make around Christmas time. So I think it's gorgeous and reminds me of German Christmas cookies. Like I said, with the reds and pinks and beautiful fawny browns and the cream. So I will have this with some other surprise goodies, which I already know and have planned up on my Instagram. I do have a giveaway going up out on Instagram right now with a skein of jingleberry, which I guess I can grab quick. A skein of jingleberry, which um, is my favorite Christmas um, colorway right now. And then I have a um, diffuser bracelet and an oil from Young Living, um, Christmas Spirit. This is with my mom, who is We Are All One Essential Oils on Instagram. We Are All One Oils, actually. And um, then a beautiful wreath, Progress Keeper. So um, definitely look out for that. Okay, so on the subject of the socks, these were so much fun to knit. I did 54 stitches. Ado D just turned six. So 54 stitches on size two millimeter needles. And um, I did a fish lips kiss heel. Lately, I have been doing a Kitchener toe. I never thought that I would be one to do a Kitchener toe. I would have never even thought to Kitchener a toe because I learned to knit socks from my grandma who always just um, does a rounded toe, which is what I did for this, but she does it until there are eight stitches left on the needles. And then she just um, draws it through together and um, you know, then, then weaves her end in. And when I knit Ado D her first pair of socks, which was out of some pink gold Stellina tonal yarn that we dyed together, um, I knit her these socks and she did not like how pointy the toe was. I never realized that it made such a pointy toe and it doesn't even really make that pointy of a toe, but she didn't like it. So for her next sock, I did a Kitchener toe with, um, she has four pair of socks right now. So then for her next pair of socks, I think I did like maybe where there were eight across and eight on the bottom and then Kitchener them together. Then I did 10 for the second pair. I did 10 on these and I'm knitting her another pair, which I'll show you in just a bit. And I have, maybe I have 10 on those as well. I either have 10 or 12. I better figure that out before I get to the bot, the toe of the second one. So yeah, I have really been enjoying doing the Kitchener. I've been doing the no ear Kitchener where you don't have those little um, taps or ears, I guess as some people call them, on either side of the Kitchener stitch. And I'm loving it. I'm really, really liking it. These fit her pretty well, um, but they're nice. They're snug, which, which is my goal when I'm knitting socks because I've been knitting socks for quite some time. And I definitely have noticed that the socks that are um, getting holes in them are my loser fitting socks. So, um, which I know everybody knows, but I didn't know that when I was first knitting socks. I didn't know that they should have kind of a negative ease fit. So um, I am loving these, the way that they fit and the way that they turned out. The other thing, since we're kind of on the subject of her birthday that I made for her for her birthday was a dress. So each year, Ado D, I usually buy her a special dress for her birthday. But now that I am trying to be a lot more conscious of the clothing that I purchase, now, now I'm trying to just purchase fabric and then make clothing, um, I decided that I would sew her up a dress. So um, I completely designed this dress, a first time ever, which um, was a little bit intimidating, <laughs> not going to lie. Um, and this literally is just came off the drying rack, so it's very wrinkly looking. But um, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I have quite a good collection of jersey fabrics, and so I wanted Robert to be a part of um, this process of making her dress, so I had him pick out the fabrics for it. So there's this beautiful fabric in the front. 
Well, here's a little back view. And it says, um, happily ever after, once upon a time, true love. And I just use that for the bodice and the arms. And then for the neckband, I use this contrasting fabric that I used for the skirt. And then I did some pretty pleats. And it's a nice flowy dress. I have enough of this fabric, both of these fabrics, to make um, a dress that is the opposite. And I think I'll do that for Ruby. So I really like that. I definitely, if I sew it again, there were some hiccups for sure along the way, things that I would change, things that I've learned, especially about pleats. Um, I had some wonderful comments on my Instagram because I do Instagram stories most days of some people telling me to be very, very patient with them. They're so worth it and they are definitely so worth it. But I made a few mistakes and then didn't take my time with those mistakes. So. Um, while Aderdy doesn't realize, while nobody has realized or said anything, I as the maker definitely know what went wrong in that garment. And um, I'm hoping that the next one will, will, will be beautiful and I will be, so it will be something that I will be very proud of. I'm proud of that, but not as proud as I know I could be. Um, I have knit two more pairs of socks. I've shown you these before, but they are completed now. Um, this is a pair of socks for Robert, and I will be giving this, these to him for St. Nicolaus, and um, they're finished. So I knit these out of a homespun house yarn in merino cashmere nylon, and this is our Collins colorway, and this is the Ash colorway. These are knit on a two, two millimeter needle as well. All of my socks are generally knit on the two millimeter needle if they're fingering weight. Um, and this is a 72 stitch count. And he wears a size, I think, 14 European. So he has quite large feet. Um, these definitely used up the full skein. There's a teeny tiny, I can show you. There's just a little bit left because I did the heels and, and toes with the ash colorway. I wish. Had I known, uh, I would have knit the, the leg just a smidge longer. Um, I'm hoping that this isn't going to be too big for him, for his leg. And I'm hoping that they're long enough. I am a tad bit worried about that. But they should be. I mean, if I put it up to my sock, they're quite a bit longer. So... Love these. I think they turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, I have another colorway, which is called You're a Bird, I'm a Bird. I have this caked up and ready to go because, um, first of all, I knit this into my Penguono, and it's very, very similar in the uh, minimalistic look of the Collins colorway, and I kind of would like to knit a pair of socks for myself out of this with um, probably water reservoir or... Um, some sort of blue tonal um, colorway. I have been dyeing up so many tonals. I probably have about 30 new tonal colorways that will be hitting the shop this week. So I'm really looking forward to that. And a lot of Dale. So um, yeah, I really, really love the way that these turned out and they're so soft. Um, I know that he's going to love them and I already have another pair of socks on the needles for him in the same base because I think he will really appreciate uh, the, the cashmere in there. It, it just feels so luxurious and, and special. So the third pair of socks that I've knit is a pair that, again, I have no idea who these are going to be for. When I knit um, female sized sock, which is generally a size 39, is the size of sock that I, I generally knit, 39, um, 40. Um, I never have any idea who they're for. I kind of have, like I've mentioned, a box that I keep all of my finished female size socks in and I don't know why I never wear my new hand knit socks. I just don't. 
and a lot of the socks in my sock drawer are getting so worn, really, really worn. Um, sometimes I dream about just throwing a lot of them, not away, but I don't know, donating them and then just giving myself a fresh drawer of socks. I love a lot of the socks that I have though, but there are definitely some that shouldn't be in there. And I don't even wear them. Anyways, oh, so this is uh, Besides and Rarities. This is on Gold Stellina. Um, again, all of the scraps that I have left over from my Penguono, which I will talk about because it is done, um, I'm just using for socks. It's so awesome because they're already caked up, completely ready to go. I can use them, like I said, for socks, a shawl, um, anything. And there's just so many different colors. So that, that's a lot of fun and it makes it really, really easy to grab socks. Um, and I feel like these socks have been getting done pretty fast because of my nighttime knitting. Um, when I say that, some of you know when I bring the girls to bed, it's dark. And that's one reason why I have to have a completely um, no fuss, no thinking stockinette sock because I can't see what I'm knitting at all. So it's really, really nice to take a sock in there, put a progress keeper on, and uh, just knit and see how much knitting I've got, you know, accomplished in the time that it takes from the time I start singing to the time that I stop and they fall asleep. I don't know why, but that is so gratifying <laughs> to walk out of the room and be like, oh, how much did I knit? Sometimes I'll even like rub my thumb from the progress keeper up to the needle as I'm knitting to see how much uh, progress I've, I've done. I know that's silly, but I've been getting so much sock knitting done that way. And the, um, the heels and the toes, also something that I've been having a lot of fun doing, um, are just a one-of-a-kind whimsy, which is what my one-of-a-kind um, colorways are called, whimsy colorway. Um, 20 gram skein that I have for littles, which are just a random assortment of mini skeins that um, you can purchase from the shop in fives, eight, 10, or now I have 24, um, which is really fun because I know a lot of you couldn't get the advent calendar put out by a homespun house and I've had so many messages and I felt so terrible that I can't do any more. I only dyed that specific amount and they're already out of the door some of you have already received, received them. I would say most Americans should be receiving them uh, this week, this upcoming week. Um, so there's that 24 option where I can put 24 different ones um, in your parcel for you. You will be able to see what's in there. So uh, maybe you have somebody uh, put them in a box and you know you can just take them out with a surprise each day or somebody can even you know put them in a fun little advent calendar for you but that option is there if you want it and I think with that option you end up getting like four skeins for free so so yeah I've had a lot of fun knitting socks I do have three socks on the needles which is a lot of fun since I was just talking about the nap time knitting I'll show you what I'm currently knitting on um, right now during bedtime not nap time but well both this is my completely themed project right now. This is in a Harry Potter bag by Amber, again, of Maker's Haven. I have my Harry Pop figure right here. And the only thing that isn't Harry Potter themed is my DPN Cozy, which is by Danny of Little Bobbins. I do have one, a one with little socks on them, and I totally should have used that because this is Dobby themed at the moment. So, I am knitting this out of Homespun House Yarn in Mermaid of the Black Lake. This is on our plump merino, which is an 80-20 um, sock yarn. I love it. Uh, the only other time I've knit with this is when I knit my Pangono. And um, this is a really popular colorway in the shop. I will be having loads of it in the shop this week. And then, to make this project even better, I have a beautiful uh, charm from Simply Serving. It's Dobby, and then it's his little sock charm. 
because uh, Dobby is the one who gave Harry the gillyweed in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire um, during the second task when he had to swim into the Black Lake, which is why, and retrieve his um, friend. So this couldn't be more perfect. This, this project just marries together uh, fantastically. And I'm loving knitting on these. You can see my Dobby Progress Keeper and how much I knit. You can see it didn't take them that long to fall asleep. Um, and I actually had to stop because I could tell that I'm definitely at the heel now. So now it's time to choose a contrasting color. I do have some new littles that I dyed up um, hanging on the drying racks. And I dyed one up in a really, really beautiful purpley blue on gold, on gold Stellina. So I'm thinking, while this isn't a Stellina sock, that might be a really fun one to put in there. I also thought that Barley, um, which is this, would be a really beautiful contrasting heel, cuff, and toe. Or just heel and toe, rather, because the cuff is in contrast. Those ends are not the most fun to weave in. They take absolutely no time at all, so I don't know why I complain about that. But, um, but yeah, it's a always so much easier to just have the cast on edge and the cast off or kitchener off edge at the end. So I'm at the um, part where I need to do the heel. I better knit on that today before um, nap time. And these DPN cozies are so great. I love them. I never have to worry about my stitches coming off my needles. And Danny's work, as always, is impeccable. So the next socks that I'm knitting on are a pair for Edo D. And these will be, I haven't decided. I'm pretty sure that I'll stick them in her advent calendar uh, and she'll get them on the 3rd of December, which I believe I'm pretty positive is the first advent. I have so many fun, things planned for the girls for December, for Advent. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, really, really looking forward to it. So um, I will be doing Vlogmas this year, not through Instagram. I will probably still be doing Instagram stories. I don't know how that will work. I've never done Vlogmas while um, actively participating in Instagram stories, um, but Vlogmas will definitely be up on, on YouTube. So right now I am knitting a pair of mustache yarn socks. Is this her Dio de los Muertos colorway? I honestly cannot remember. I believe it's something like that. And I have the first sock done. It's the same exact thing. Two millimeter needles. Um, I use the Knit Pro Zings for this. I've kind of been going back and forth on Knit Pro Zings and Knit Pro Carbons needles. DPNs and um, 54 stitches, which makes it a little strange for the Fish Lips Kiss Heel because, you know, 54 evenly divided is 27. So I've been doing 28 for those of you who are interested because I know somebody will ask. Um, I've been doing 28 and um, I'm not going to go into how I do the toe with that strange, with those strange numbers. And then it looks like here um, I've done 10. So I did do 10 for the Kitchener toe. And I did do a contrasting um, heel in the same exact color that I used for my Mermaid of the Black Lake socks um, because I really wanted those um, stripes to still be perfectly in order. I didn't care about that when I knit on Elodie's uh, Nicole C. Mendes socks. But for these ones, I don't know why, but I did. And I had a bit of, of this left, which also reminds me that um, I think that those 20 grams are definitely enough to do heel, cuff, and toe. I know people worry about that sometimes, but I knit my Besides and Rarities socks, the, the, the toe and the heel, yes. And I've done the heels in both of these socks, and I still have, I mean, I have quite a bit left of this, and this was a 20 gram skein. Um, I definitely think it would be enough to do two cuffs. Not not now, not on top of doing two heels and one toe. But, yeah. So, 
Here's the second one. I'm not going to show you, whoops, the charm that's on here because it is the charm for the third Gilmore Girl installment, which will be going out in December. But um, this is the second one. Like I said, I have the heel done and now I'm just starting to do the stockinette section on here. This is not a sock that I can knit on during nap times and bedtime because you can't see it. So I just have the toe to go. I could finish these pretty quickly. I have another uh, Little Bobbins DPN cozy right here. And because I like my projects to match, um, the kitties were perfect for Adoji because she loves her little baby kittens. <laughs> and I do have these in a very special Little Bobbins bag that Danny and her mom made me for my birthday last year. And I love it. And I do have some um, Gillyweed on here, which was a super, super miniatures and a homespun house uh, club last year. Or was it at the beginning of this year? I'm pretty sure it was last year. Whoops, I better put that first sock in there. So the third sock that I'm knitting, well, actually, to go back to these socks, this was a an OCD skein. So um, this is just the first 50 gram skein. And then I have another 50 gram skein and I will be knitting Ruby. I haven't decided if I want to do the same exact pair of socks or a pair of leg warmers because she is two. She doesn't wear hand knit socks that often. When she sees Ado D wearing hers, she really wants to wear a pair. But she just doesn't really know how to move or maneuver around in them. She can't handle the slipping, <laughs> which is not hilarious. It's actually horrible. So I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm a horrible person. But um, I almost would feel terrible giving Ado D socks and Ruby not. I have to think about that one. I'm, I'm pretty positive that Ruby will get a pair of socks. The third and final pair of socks that I'm knitting on um, in my Luli project bag is a pair, another pair for Robert. And this is out of a homespun house yarn. Again, I have another Simply Serving project, Progress Keeper on here, her little Christmas charms. And um, I'm knitting this out of a colorway called the Shire. This is a colorway that I've had for quite a long time. Um, I put it out here and there. I feel like now that, you know, autumn is here and winter is coming, for some of you it's already there. Um, I just think it's a, a really, really nice tonal holiday. Um, there are quite a lot of colors in here. I'm sure you can't see it because it's very gray outside. Um, so that makes it quite difficult, but um, I love this yarn, I love this colorway, and I love Lindsay's Progress Keepers. I have seen quite a bit of um, polymer clay Progress Keepers, um, I collected Progress Keepers for a while, and Lindsay's are by far my favorite. I really love her technique, I love her glazing, I love the way that her charms come out, I love the way that they look. Um, I've never really had the feeling that I have when I open up Progress Keepers as I do when I open up parcels from her. I'm always excited when I receive them, but when I open it, I feel this extreme just giddiness. Um, and that's a really, really exciting feeling. Um, it's really awesome because she's a maker. She hand makes them and, um, there, there's just something really special about the things that she makes. And I love just the thought of imagining her sitting at her desk with her little one being crazy in the background or being calm in the background or doing whatever um, because she is a stay-at-home mom and she takes care of her little babes. Uh, sitting and, and creating these just really, really special little, little charms that definitely make me smile. So... Um, I love Simply Serving. If you haven't checked out her shop, you need to go and check them out. She is constantly coming up with new creations and uh, I pretty much love everything she does. So that's a very long way to say that I love Lindsay's stuff. She will be doing, she will be the one who does the, the upcoming charms for um, January, February, March, Harry Potter Yarn and Charm Club, 
which is coming out tomorrow, Monday the 13th. So signups for those will, will be tomorrow. I've had a lot of questions about people asking me when they can sign up. Um, the charms that we're collaborating on are so amazing. They're so awesome. You guys are going to love them. I can't wait. So I am now kind of at a crossroads on this sock because... I'm thinking I might want to do a little bit of fair isle work on this. I have a pattern that is called Dale, and um, that's my grandma Sue's middle name, uh, Norwegian. I'm pretty sure you pronounce it Dada in, in Norway, in Norwegian. <laughs> but um, she always says Dale because she's American and we're American. And uh, so, anyway, so I have a pattern called Dale Socks, and it is a fair isle color work pattern where it has uh, socks, uh, hearts around the top, which is a motif that my grandma does very, very often on a lot of her things. And then it has just a little snowflake, which is what she would call them, pattern all the way down to the foot. So I'm thinking about doing that on Robert's socks, but I'm thinking about incorporating pine trees. And I'm thinking that this pattern needs to be edited anyway, because it is a very... This pattern was written for how I used to knit my socks, which was which was on a 2.5 millimeter needle, and it has a very low stitch count. So with me knitting on um, two millimeter needles now, that size of sock would probably fit Edo D. It would definitely fit Edo D. Um, so I'm thinking this would be a really great way to revamp that pattern, create it for people who want to knit on smaller needles or who need a much larger stitch count and even maybe want to make a man sock with that. Um, while it has hearts on it, men can definitely wear hearts. Uh, my grandpa has a pair of, I believe, clogged socks that have hearts on the heel and they're absolutely beautiful that my grandma knit. And uh, I think pine trees, though, would be really beautiful for this. So this is a 72 stitch count. I would have to figure out how to work um, that into this pattern. And I also need to figure out, I, it probably would use uh, my Fresh Sheets colorway, which is a really um, creamy white. So that's probably what I would do for the Fair Isle of this. So this one's just kind of been sitting um, now that the cuff is finished. And I didn't count the cuff. I used to be a person who would always count the cuff and the leg. And now I literally just look at it and I'm like, yep, that looks good. For the toe, I definitely want those to be the same. Unless I'm doing stripes, then I literally go off of the stripes. I trust the dyer. So that is this. And um, I used to only feel comfortable having one sock on the needles at a time. Now I would like to have a pair of socks for everyone on the needles needles at a time. I would like to have a pair for myself, Robert, and then our two girls on the needles. Um, so Ruby's need to get on the needles. And the only reason why these are on a magic loop, they're on my magic loop zings, the two, two millimeter needle, like I said, um, is because I couldn't find any more DPNs, but it's fine. It's it's working completely fine, and I'm enjoying that. So I can show you guys my um, penguono now. I have not woven in any of the ends, but I knit in quite a bit of the ends as I was working. Um, I love this. I wear this a lot. This was all knit out of homespun house yarns, and I um, knit it with a strand of mohair and fresh sheets colorway and I have had questions about how much yarn this used I have no idea I could weigh it I don't have a scale I don't have any sort of scale um, so that's definitely not going to work but I'm pretty sure so I used two strands of fingering weight yarn held with a strand of mohair and like I said this is all a homespun house yarn um, I just thought it would be really fun to have a piece that I can wear that, that really represents my dyeing and it's completely a piece of, of artwork to me because I dyed the yarn and um, I knit tons of my different colorways into this. So um, yeah, I really, really love it. I guess I can put it on for you guys. 
it's not scratchy at all. Um, the the mohair, you know, is something that when you knit with, you kind of wonder if it's going to be scratchy, but it's not. It's mohair silk, baby mohair. So it really, really adds just this amazing texture and beautiful halo and you can see my little ends hanging out the end. I've worn this, like I said, so many times. I've worn it out. I feel like it's such a fantastic piece. Um, I wear a lot of um, really plain clothes. I mean, I wear quite, I have black on here, um, black bodysuit, black shorts, I have black tights on, and I just feel like this sort of a piece adds something really special and different and eclectic to a very, very simple outfit. Um, it's really warm, so it can be a piece that I just put on if I know, you know, um, we're driving to somewhere quick where I'm just going in and out of the car um, and I don't need a really warm coat. So I love it. I, I really, really like my pink Um Yeah, and I'm very happy I knit it. I would recommend this to anyone. Um, you don't even need to use a lot of color, to be honest, if you don't want. I think it could be really cool knit in tones of grays or, you know, knit in, knit in anything, any, any color you like. The shape is really cool. There are definitely things that I would change about it if I were to knit it again. Um, I mean, Stephen West is really big, so a lot of his designs are quite large. And um, I, I really like the fact that it's oversized. I'm not normally a person who wears very oversized things. As you can see by what I'm wearing, it's all very fitted. So I think that um, probably one of these, this final panel here, this blue one, this is our Sugar Sweeties colorway, could probably have been omitted for me personally. Um, if you're a larger person, I think that the, this is pretty perfect. But if you are smaller, um, it is quite massive. Um, so it is, it is like a really, really cozy blanket. Um, and I love it, and I'm really happy and proud of it. So um, it really reminds me of his Marled Magic Shawl, which if you've been watching for a while, you know was a wonderful obsession. I have also been working on a shawl that I'm knitting for my sister. And um, it's the Road Trip Shawl by Kemper Ray. And I am really loving this. Um, when I knit this for my mom, I used two colorways that were really similar. I, I used um, Bohemian, a homespun house yarn, and then I used a colorway by Maker's Haven, Amber, which was absolutely stunning, in a really jewel-toned purple. I'm pretty sure it was a one-of-a-kind colorway. Um, so it's very interesting to knit this in two colors that are so contrasting. Um, I know Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts is knitting this and hers is gorgeous and I know she's loving it as well. Uh, this is the only design that I've knit by Kemper, but I, I really love it. Um, it's such a fun design. Um, and this section is so much fun. I know uh, Chelsea from Legacy Fiber Arts mentioned this as well. It's, it's just fun to see those little pops of color here in between. So I'm knitting this out of ash and this is in the merino cashmere nylon base and then I'm knitting this out of puddle jumper which is in plump merino which is an 80 20 um, base and I'm really loving the way that this is looking. I haven't knit on it in a little while because I've just been on a sock kick and I've been knitting on something else um, but it is a lot of fun, and I definitely, definitely want to have this finished before Christmas. While well, it's still cold, and I just think it would be a really fun Christmas um, shawl to send in her package. I am using Jago Needles. I have no idea if these are 3.25. Do I have the case in here? I do. These are... Three, size US 5, 3.75. I've never used those 0 0.25, 0 0.75. Those are American needles. Um, 
but they're really nice. I really like these needles. They're the only Chago needles I've ever um, used, but those were sent to me by Oysters and Pearls in a swap that we did, and I really like them. I definitely enjoy using those. Um, the next and final project that I'm knitting on, I have been knitting a bit on my granny stripe blanket. I think I've probably put 10 stripes on there since we last saw each other. So not a lot in the last two months almost, but um, it was probably, I don't know, two, three evenings worth of crocheting in a row. <laughs> um, I have this on a, um, the Fawn and the Fox bag, my wool felt project bag. And then I have these three amazing Simply Serving um, Harry Potter Progress Keepers on here. I'm just using these as a zipper pull altogether because I can't have a progress. I don't have so many projects that I can put a progress keeper on all of them. And I don't want them to be hidden away. I display them, them really nicely on the top of um, one of my yarn shelves um, where my personal stash is inside of. I have some really beautiful ceramic containers. Um, well, they're little trays that were given to me by Jody and Tracy from the Groceria Girls and um, my mom and dad for my birthday. But this way I get to see these guys and they get to hang out with me all the time. I also have some pins on this bag. Um, and I have had pins, I would say for almost a year that I have had and want to list to the Homespun House shop. So those will be up this week and I have quite a wonderful collection of pins that will be going up in the shop. Um, yeah, so I am very excited about that. I, I have a few of my favorites on here. Two of these are not Homespun House ones that will be in the shop. I have this junk yarn one that probably should be on my junk yarn project that I'm knitting right now. And um, this lovely sewing machine that was given to me by my friend Hannah, friend of the podcast. I am currently knitting on a featherweight cardigan. I am knitting this out of a homespun house. This is a Hannah Fetig pattern uh, yarn in the ash colorway. I'm using Knit Pro Zings 3.5 millimeter needles. And um, I have a, a good amount of it done. Um, and I also have, of course, a Simply Serving project progress keeper on here. She makes these lovely cupcakes uh, charms that the like where there would be a wrapper in the cupcake is the colors of your house. So I have Gryffindor because I'm in the Gryffindor house. I took the Pottermore uh, quiz and then it has a sorting hat on top and she does a beautiful job making these. I really love them. Um, so I've already, I'm doing the size 38.75 I feel like it is um, so it's not a negative ease uh, pullover I normally would wear a 34 or 36 um, so yeah I don't want it to be like a super tight pullover I want it to be just like the one that I knit out of bull and vine yarns in the fairy hair colorway which I adore I wear that all the time. That's also kind of, just because the yarn is such a beautiful colorway, that's also just a really nice piece to add to um, a very simple, non-colorful outfit. Um, and I like it that way. So um, yeah, I have knit this much down from the arms. I like to leave my uh, armholes very large with a lot of um, extra thread around when I when I pull the the stitches um, when I put yarn through the stitches sorry because I like to be able to get my arms through very easily and try it on as I knit so that that way I get it the exact length that I want it when it's finished I do usually take away one or two inches if I'm using a super wash yarn which this is it's a 70% super wash merino 20% non super wash cashmere and then 10 nylon so I know that with that 70% super wash yarn it will stretch a little bit um, well quite a bit uh, super wash yarn usually stretches in length and not so much in width so that's definitely something that I'm keeping in mind as I'm knitting this and I just wanted this to be a really stable piece that I can wear 
all the time because of that black um, cardigan that I wear. It's probably, I don't even know, 50-50 cotton, nylon, or polyamid, some sort of cardigan that I wear quite often. But I wanted a knit one. I wanted one that I made. Um, and so I decided to knit one in ash. And ash is nice because it's not too black to um, not enjoy knitting it. I know that black cannot be a fun colorway to knit with, but this has quite a bit of shades of gray, light, medium, everywhere in between, all the way up to black. Um, so I really, really, really think that this will be a cardigan that I will wear a lot. Um, and I could see knitting it in in uh, my berry picking, berry picking colorway, which I have right here. I think that would make a really, really nice um, cardigan as well. So. A homespun house is going to be um, having woods for sale in the shop. I have looked through a lot of knitting publications. I worked in a yarn store pretty much all of my teenage years. I spent so much time um, in yarn shops. I've looked through a lot of publications and I have never come across something as special as this. There is not one pattern in this publication that I do not like. Um, all of the information in here is wonderful. The way that it's laid out is absolutely stunning. The paper quality is impeccable. Um, the graphics, I could honestly go on and on. The designer and yarn profiles are fantastic. This, the way that this book was thought out, I mean, this is like art, this, this whole book. I honestly am stunned every time I open it up. I know that that could sound like an exaggeration, but it honestly is not. In all of my, in all of my years uh, looking through books, this book really left me in quite a bit of awe, um, which is why I decided to sell it in the shop. I feel very, well, I had nothing to do with this publication. Um, I feel very proud to be selling this in the shop and to be offering it and sharing it with you guys and putting it out in the world to as many people as I can because there are so many beautiful patterns in here. Um, there are Two first that I am kind of um, going back and forth between knitting. The first one is the Sauva Balen sweater uh, by Jessica Gore. I could be completely butchering that and I'm sure that I am. And then the second one is the Windfell sweater and that is by Jen Steingas. And um, the Windfell uh, pullover is a fair isle or color work rather because there are some uh, rounds where you have to do three colors at a time and so I dyed up some yarn in some local yarn that I thought would be really pretty for the windfall. This is just an undyed colorway. This right here is bohemian and this is peony and I thought that would make a really really beautiful uh, pullover for that um, and I thought that that would be one that I would enjoy wearing. The sweater by Jessica Gore I thought would be, it has a lot of cables and it's absolutely beautiful as well. I thought that would be pretty in um, just this undyed local yarn. Uh, I do have plans of putting together some sorts of kits for the Woods publication. Um, there are some really beautiful colorwork mittens, socks, other pullovers, stoles, things like that in there that I would love to put some things together for. And um, I know of a farmer who makes wonderful uh, wools here, yarns. And um, I think that would be really special to offer with the Woods publication because um, it's very, very local feeling. With Verena and Hanalisa 
um, living in Berlin, and I met them before. They're they're both really lovely, so I'm very excited to be offering woods in the shop. That will be for sale this week. So I mentioned that we have the Harry Potter Club going for sale on the 13th, which is tomorrow. I also have some amazing boxes that I'm putting together with other makers. Um, next Monday, the 17th, I think that's a Monday. Um, but anyway, the 17th, I will be having some Harry Potter boxes going together with Danny from Little Bobbins. Um, we've teamed up and she sewed up some beautiful project bags with some DPN cozies. And I have a collection of minis from many Harry Potter clubs that were one of a kind that will be uh, put together with that box. 10 gram mini skeins from one of a kind, never to be dyed again. They were just saved from all of those previous batches um, that will be going up. There will be 10 of those. Um, so an extreme limited amount for me. Um, so those are very, very special, one of a kind um, boxes. And there will be quite a few other things in there that we've collected. There will be a stitch marker from Super Super Miniatures, some beautiful brooches, um, a couple of other special things that you'll see in the listing. So um, that will be for sale on the 17th. And then on the 24th of November, Danny, myself, Super Super Miniatures, um, Northerly Goods have teamed up together and we have a fantastic Christmas holiday themed box that will be going out. Nothing in there will be revealed. It is an amazing package um, and there will again be 10 of those. So um, those will be going up on the 24th. That will be a surprise. You will have no idea what's in there, but it is filled with goodies. So I'm, I'm so excited about that box. You guys are going to be in love. I know that for sure. So yeah, um, I have some sewing plans coming up um, for uh, as well, the first advent. Um, I would like to start gifting the girls a pair of holiday pajamas or winter pajamas for the first advent. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun. So Adity has a pair of pajamas. These were as well, um, just hanging on the drying rack because she wears them all the time. So they are like a onesie jumpsuit, zip up style pajama. She just has one pair. I don't even know where we got these. I feel like we must have gotten them from Lidl. So she loves them. And they're her favorite pair of pajamas. Anytime they're clean, she wears them. I want to make a pair of jumpsuit pajamas onesie pajamas for the girls. So I have this fabric. I think this is a Riley Blake jersey fabric. And I have three weeks to sew up two jumpsuits, one for Elodie, one for Ruby. And I will be pattern hacking Patty Do. I think it's the Alice children's jumpsuit. It's in German, so those of you who speak English, I'm sorry. But I've sewn up quite a few of her patterns. And this one is a sleeveless or like cap sleeve, very, uh, pet pattern, but I'm going to hack it and make it a pant, um, long sleeve style jumpsuit for the warm nights. Well, it will keep her warm in the, the cold nights. So um, I'm excited about that. I will be using ribbing, of course, for the feet and, and around the neck. Um, and I'm excited to share that with you when I finish it. I have no idea what sort of zipper I'm going to use. You can do snaps, but I think I'm going to put a zipper on there just because I think that's the easiest solution for Ruby zipping rather than snapping. Um, I want to share with you just a few of the yarns that are in the shop. I had a massive shop update last week, which was so much fun because I had gone a month without having any uh, for sale yarn in the shop. I had, you know, club posts and mystery yarn clubs and things like that, but there was no active yarn in the shop. Um, and there is literally, there, are, there is a huge selection of yarns, um, 
hundreds of, of yarns. So if you're wanting to go and shop a homespun house, it is definitely now is the time. <laughs> so I wanted to show you, I already showed you these two tonals. There are t a lot more. This week there will be about 30 different tonal colorways on many different bases going up into the shop. Um, this one is just probably my my most loved tonal. That one's barley, along with berry picking. Here I have a new colorway that I've come out with. It's called Salmon Gilly. I really love Salmon Gilly from um, Game of Thrones. I think they are such a sweet um, wonderful couple. Um, both of their stories are quite tragic, as are many um, people from the Game of Thrones. But I really felt like this represented Sam and Gilly. And uh, while looking for some yarn for a friend of mine whose favorite color is green and my grandma Sue's favorite color is green, I realized that a homespun house does not have that many green colorways. There is quite a gap. Um, I have a bit of green tonals, but there isn't a lot of green speckles. So I don't know if you can see it here, but the Salmon Gilly has so many different shades of green and grays and even a little bit of uh, blue greens in there. Um, it's a really, really beautiful colorway. Um, I do have the Home for the Holidays colorway. This one knits up as a um, micro stripe. Really pretty. Um, I dyed up this yarn because of the hole that I have in these socks, so that inspired me to dye up some of that yarn. And then I already showed you Jingle Berry, but I do want to mention that this week there will be a lot of um, half-blood prints going up into the shop. This one isn't labeled because it's not yet in the shop. So I did get a new little uh, skein of yarn here in the mail. This is from Regia and they have a new winter line that just came out. Um, this is their Adventskranz colorway I think is what it's called. Um, if you're looking up the color number it's 09408 and they have quite a big collection of, of new holiday themed colors. They're all German um, as is the brand. Um, but the colorways are very German inspired. Um, but Adventskranz was definitely the most it's scream Christmas to me. So I think I'll be casting these one on um, sometime. I thought I would cast them on right away, but um, it's not really screaming my name as much as it was when I bought it. That doesn't mean that I don't love it because I do. However, it does mean that this could possibly be on hold until next year. That being said, also being said, I thought last month that I wouldn't be knitting any socks. So this could very, very easily be cast on soon at some point. Um, I want to mention the whimsy colorways. I mentioned this very, very briefly earlier in the episode. Um, if you go and search yarns in the shop, you will see a selection of colorways called Whimsy, and it seems like there are a lot of different colorways called Whimsy. The reason for this is because, um, and I mentioned this last episode as well, but I know that not everybody watches every episode, and I know that not everyone who purchases yarn from me watches a Homespun House um, vlog casts. So whimsy colorways are colorways that are purely one of a kind colorways and I did them on a whim and they are whimsical and beautiful and fun. So that's why I call them whimsy colorways. I didn't just want to call them one of a kind um, because I wanted a special homespun house name for those whimsical one of a kind colorways. So here are some new whimsy colorways that will be thrown up into the shop. This one I had to save for myself. Um, I could definitely see this being a new cast on for me. This is not my skein, this is a shop skein, but I did save one of those for myself. And this one is really, really beautiful as well. I have a bunch of um, littles that I dyed up in this, when I when I dyed up this batch as well, um, of whimsies. <laughs> so yeah, um, I can't believe December is rolling around the corner so soon. I did an advent swap with Amber of Maker's Haven and I, cannot wait for that. I have high hopes. <laughs> I don't know if she's ever dyed a skein of yarn that I've looked at and thought, ooh, I don't know if I really like that. 
everything she's dyed I have always loved. Uh, we definitely have very, very similar color palette as far as the colors we like. Um, our dyeing style is completely different. The way that we dye is nothing the same, which makes it really fun to be doing um, an advent swap with her, which means I will get tons of minis of her yarn and then a big skein on Christmas Day, which is actually the day after when we celebrate Christmas here in Germany. Um, you guys will find out all about that on Vlogmas when it comes. Um, I'm really excited to share that with you. Uh, I have been wanting to go back and watch previous vlogmases from other people just because it's so much fun. Um, I've watched a couple of my old vlogmases because it's just fun to see what we were up to last holiday season. Um, you guys can go and check those out at any point if you want. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to vlogmas and advent time, um, which is very, very much celebrated here in Germany. And while I am not German, I love um, the huge celebration leading up into until Christmas here in Germany. I think that's such an awesome tradition to be a part of and, you know, to have my husband be German and his family be German and to be able to learn about those things like um, and, and you know bring it into my family life so I'm excited to share those things with you this year like I did last year and um, yeah I'm really really looking forward to it and creating all of the fun Christmas things Amber and I from Makers Haven I want to mention before I forget do have our ornament along that we started at the beginning of this year it was funny because we were really quite into it at the beginning of the year after Christmas making our ornaments and then as the year progressed we both just kind of stopped. Um, the thread has been going in my Ravelry group kind of strong in the nod and hopefully it gets stronger now as it's November and now that I'm mention mentioning it again but I definitely want to start creating some ornaments. Um, I definitely want to give the girls a couple little ornaments in their advent calendar and um yeah i'm really i'm so excited are, are you guys excited about christmas as well um i haven't watched any christmas movies yet although i've kind of i've watched the nightmare before christmas i would say maybe five times in the last month while i've been dying and knitting <clears throat> it is such a fantastic film i love that i could see watching that tonight <laughs> anyway, it's been so lovely chatting with you. I hope that um, you've had a wonderful November so far. I will see you soon. Bye.